On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, staying off the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. Welcome to the Crushing Debt Podcast with your host, Florida attorney Sean Yesner, where our goal is to help you get rid of the financial bullies in your life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and I have another topic this week about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. It's something that I've talked a lot about, and I'm going to get into other episodes that you can listen to if you want to hear more information about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. And basically, this episode is how to try to stay off the list in the event you get a letter from Freddie Mac that they want to put you on the list. Um, Most of the stuff that I've done here in terms of helping people come off the Freddie Mac list have been they are on the list or they have been on the list for years and they're trying to find ways now to come off. What I'm going to address is what do you do when you get that letter from Freddie Mac that says, we're going to put you on the list. What do you do in that event? But before I get there real quick, I do want to talk about our sponsor like I do at the beginning of uh, almost every episode. Our sponsor is Sam Cohen, the owner of Attorneys First Insurance. And what Attorneys First does is they write malpractice insurance or errors and omissions insurance for attorneys and title companies all over the country. Uh, Sam has been a longtime listener. He's been a longtime supporter of the show. In fact, uh, almost everything that you hear, all the improvements that you hear on the show pretty much came uh, as a suggestion from Sam. And if it's something that you don't like about what I've changed about the show, then chances are it was something I thought of doing, not not Sam. Uh, a great way to support him would be to refer an attorney or title company that you know that's coming towards the end of their uh, malpractice uh, coverage. They're coming up for their renewal, or maybe they've started a new uh, law practice, or they've started a new title company, and they need to get malpractice insurance. Uh, Sam would be a fantastic resource for them. What I love about Sam is that he'll give you an honest apples to apples comparison. So if what you currently have, if he can't beat it, he will let you know that. Uh, he knows a ton about the malpractice insurance industry, especially related to attorneys and title companies. So again, a great way to support Sam, would a great way to support the show would be to refer an attorney or title company you know over to sam at attorneysfirst.com or you can also go to their website, which is also attorneysfirst.com. So like I said, I've done a bunch of different topics uh, around the Freddie Mac list. So one of my first episodes, year one, episode 32, was basically where I talked about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. Now, it's actually kind of interesting the way that I came across the list. I basically stumbled onto it. And so I was preparing um, for a realtor attorney seminar. I think this was back in like 2012 or 13. And I was preparing for this seminar. And one of the things the attorney, I'm sorry, the realtors wanted to know is how do we avoid liability? So I was typing in different search terms in Google about realtors and liability and up pops this thing about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. So I click on it and I looked at it and I, and I read it and I, I clicked around for some other information and I included all that stuff in my presentation to the realtors. Well, I happened to have a videographer friend of mine come out and film this uh, presentation that I gave to the realtors, the entire presentation, all the topics that I covered probably about an hour or so worth of content, 15 minutes or so, or an hour's worth of content. And you can see all of these videos on the Yesner Law YouTube page. What she did was she took all that raw content. We then took all that raw content and broke it up into two to four minute clips and then posted those over the course of however long uh, up onto YouTube. And they're there today. Well, one of those videos was a two or three minute clip about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list and what I had found in my research. And that video went viral because there wasn't very much information on the internet about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list at the time. So that video went viral and I had someone call me and say, hey, I'm on the list. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, here's what I've researched. Why don't you try telling Freddie Mac this, that, the other thing and let me know how it goes. And I got a call back maybe a a month or two later. Hey, I took your advice. I wrote a letter to Freddie Mac and I'm off the list. Like, great. Congratulations. 
I get another call. Hey, I'm on the list. I said, okay, well, here's what I told the last guy. Here's what I think you should do. Try blah, 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 blah. And a couple months later, got a call back from that person. Hey, I'm off the list. Great. Then it sort of dawned on me. If I have some knowledge that'll help people come off the list, why am I giving away this knowledge for free? So I started charging. Uh, And so what I did was the next person that called, I said, look, I'm going to charge you however much it was at the time. I'll write the letter. Since you're not in Florida, you can put it on your letterhead. You can send it off to Freddie Mac and, and we'll see if it works. And sure enough, a couple months later, it worked. That person came off the list. And what I realized was I am not suing Freddie Mac. I'm not going into court and fighting with Freddie Mac. So the fact that these people may be in different parts of the country, I think I can still represent them because this is not law that is specific to Florida. It's it's a, a persuasive argument to Freddie Mac about why someone should not be on the list. And so I then started doing the letters on my letterhead, and I probably got to about the 10th or 11th person before I finally got my first denial. Now, I've been totally transparent in all of my podcast episodes that I do not have a 100% success rate of getting people off of the Freddie Mac list, but I have gotten more people off the list than I've got rejections for. However, one of the interesting things is I've got a few clients that got the letter from Freddie Mac that said, hey, we're going to put you on the list unless you write to us within 21 days and tell us why we should not put you on the list. So this is before they're going on the list. Freddie Mac says, we want to put you on the list. I've had three or four or five of those. I can't remember, but I have a 0% success rate. In other words, of all the people that have gotten a letter from Freddie Mac that says, hey, we intend to put you on the list, I haven't been able to prevent any of them from going on the list. Now, again, that's only uh, what, three or four or five, I said. So it's not a, a big number compared to all of the different people I've been able to help uh, come off the list. But it is a little bit troubling, and it is sort of what prompted today's episode. And so I'll get into that here in a little bit, but I want to sort of finish. So episode 32 is sort of my introductory uh, podcast episode to what the Freddie Mac exclusionary list is. In fact, episode 32 is still called the Yesner Law podcast. But yeah, episode 32 talks about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. Uh, episode 83 is uh, more of an update. So what I did was I took all the people that came off the list and didn't come off the list, and I looked at all the different factors of each of the different people, uh, and I tried to find commonalities and trends and different things to say, well, this group of people had this in common and they came off the list. This group of people had this in common and they did not come off the list. One of the challenges of the Freddie Mac list is that when uh, somebody comes off the list or even when they don't come off the list, Freddie Mac doesn't tell us what we argued that was persuasive or Freddie Mac doesn't tell us you didn't talk about blank and that's why they're staying on the list. Freddie Mac just sends a simple letter back that says, we reviewed your submission and -and so-and-so will be off the list as of January 1. Or we've reviewed your submission and we are not taking so-and-so off the list at this time. That's it. They don't tell you what they liked about what you wrote, what they didn't like about what you wrote. So a lot of what I've been able to do here and a lot of what I've been able to learn here are by studying the trends of those clients that have come off the list and have not come off the list and trying to spot trends of what works and what doesn't work. Unfortunately, Freddie, uh, you know, we've called and we've talked to them a couple of times and and we've gotten maybe a little nugget here or there based on our relationship with the different people at Freddie Mac, but they don't really give a class on what to do to come off the list. This is all sort of trial by fire, uh, trial and error, uh, trends, things that have worked for one person but haven't worked for another person and and just sort of spotting uh, what Freddie Mac likes to see and what they don't like to see. So that was episode 83. Episode 132, another episode about coming off of the Freddie Mac exclusionary list, again, where I expanded on more stuff that I've learned in trying to get people off the list. Episode 179, now when Freddie Mac sends uh, the letters that say you're on the list, they have their exclusionary list policy. And so I went through that policy on episode 179. So if you want to hear more about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list policy, uh, episode 179 of the podcast. Uh, Episode 262, uh, again, another sort of um, compilation episode, but I titled it The Secret 
to coming off the Freddie Mac exclusionary list, which is sort of how I came up with today's title of staying off the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. So uh, the secret, you'll have to listen to episode 262, but probably said it here on this episode a couple of times, so it may not be uh, anything too, uh, too groundbreaking when you finally hear what the secret is. And then again, the last uh, episode that I've done on the Freddie Mac list was um, about six months ago. It was episode 277, and it was the top five myths about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. And I tackled things that uh, people say to me when I'm having a, a consultation about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list that frankly just aren't true. Things like that Freddie Mac shares the list with other servicers. That's not true. Things like uh, Freddie Mac is accusing me of having committed a crime. Again, that's that's not true. So uh, some of the different myths around being on uh, or going on the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. So what is the significance of this Freddie Mac exclusionary list? Here's the thing. If Freddie Mac catches someone or if Freddie Mac gets evidence or believes that somebody is creating non-investment quality loans. They're creating loans that are supposed to be sold to Freddie Mac, but are not investment quality, not Freddie Mac quality for one reason or another, then Freddie Mac can put the responsible party on their exclusionary list. And the responsible party is not limited to a mortgage person. I've seen realtors on the list. I've seen title companies, title attorneys. I've seen notaries. I've seen appraisers. I've seen property preservation people. I've seen all different types of of professions related to real estate go on the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. And the consequences there are when you're on the exclusionary list, you cannot participate in a transaction where Freddie Mac is a party. Any transaction where Freddie Mac is a party. Let me say that again. Any transaction where Freddie Mac is is a party. So for example, I had one person that I believe I was able to help come off the list. They were a real estate investor and they got put on the list. Well, their investment days were over. Their investment days ended uh, in the market crash back in 2009, 10, 11, 12. uh, And they were trying to buy a house for themselves to live in. And they were trying to qualify using Freddie Mac financing. And Freddie Mac said, nope, we're not going to loan to you. You're on the exclusionary list. Uh, realtors who have been called by the mortgage officer during the course of the transaction. Hey, you're on the Freddie Mac list. You can't participate. You can't get a commission in this transaction. Now, I don't know what the legalities. Freddie Mac is a quasi-governmental entity, and so can the government interfere with a contract? Probably not, but Freddie Mac can say, we're not going to give your borrower Freddie Mac lending unless you're no longer a part of the transaction, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor. And so that was the situation. The realtor couldn't Uh, be a part of the closing, couldn't be a part of the transaction because they were on the list. Obviously, mortgage originators can't write Freddie Mac loans if they're on the list. Appraisers can't appraise properties uh, that may have Freddie Mac financing on them because they're on the list and on and on and on. And and again, every kind of different real estate professional you can think of, uh, I've seen on the list from notaries and mobile notaries all the way up to mortgage brokers and and everything in between. So really this list, you don't want to be on Freddie Mac's radar. Uh, You know, sort of the attitude I take with the Florida bar. Uh, I don't want to be on the Florida bar's radar. Whether I do something good or bad, I still don't want to be on the Florida bar's radar. I just rather sort of do my thing and stay in my lane and represent my clients. And if I don't hear from the Florida bar, uh, that's great. Uh, Even if it's a good thing they're contacting me about, it's still, you get a little apprehensive as an attorney when you get that letter and it says the Florida bar uh, on the outside. So those are all the episodes I've done about the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. Episode 32, episode 83, episode 132, episode 179, episode 262, and episode 277. What I wanted to talk about today was going on the list. And like I said a few minutes ago, when someone is going on the list, Freddie Mac sends them a letter and says, you basically have 21 days to explain to us why you should not be on the list. Now, here's the interesting thing. When I'm trying to get someone off the list who's been on the list two years, three years, five years, 10 years, whatever it may happen to be, I don't really talk about why that person should not have been on the list to begin with. I can't really find a very good analogy, but I've often analogized it to parole. In other words, you don't want to argue to the parole board that you didn't commit the crime. 
You want to argue to the parole board all the great things you've done since you've been incarcerated that show you're not a risk to anyone. Now, again, I'm not a criminal law attorney, so that is my very, very, very basic, probably totally incorrect understanding of criminal law, but I think the analogy, unfortunately, is appropriate. I don't want to link being on the list to being a criminal, because I don't believe those are the same things, but I think the analogy holds. When you're on the list and you're trying to get off the list, you don't want to argue to Freddie Mac that you should not have been on the list to begin with. What you want to argue is, here's all the great stuff I've done since going on the list, and here's why you should take me off the list, because I'm no longer a threat to Freddie Mac. Now, when you flip that, and you say you're going to go on the list unless you convince us within 21 days why you should not be on the list, well, you really can't reach back and say, Well, since you found out about all this stuff that I allegedly did, here's all the great stuff that I've done. You can't really argue that because then you're basically admitting, yeah, I did all this bad stuff that you're thinking I'm going to go on the list for. So I think in a a situation like that, you have to argue, I didn't do it. I don't deserve to be on the list. The problem is Freddie Mac does a lot of due diligence and in my experience, once you get that letter that says you're going to be on the list in 21 days unless you tell us why you shouldn't be on the list, unfortunately, the die is cast. Unfortunately, I think they're going to put you on the list. Again, I know of no examples where someone got that letter and was able to remain off the list. They did not go on the list. And in the, whatever, three, four, five that I've tried, they've all been unsuccessful. And I've tried to argue you know, here's all the great things. I'm a pillar of the community. Everybody trusts me. Here's my processes and procedures, even to the extent of sending company manuals that say, here's the process and the procedure by which we process all loans, including Freddie Mac loans. That didn't keep people off the list. So I think there needs to be a bigger portion of the argument in the letter that you should not go on the list and here's why. Now, Freddie Mac does identify the specific loans that they say are causing someone to go on the list. So maybe the strategy there is to attack each one of those loans one by one. We didn't falsify information on loan A because blank. We didn't uh, get a false CPA report on loan two because blank. And, And again, I think coming off the list and staying off the list are the same thing in terms of you want to provide as much documentation, you want to provide as much evidence. You want to provide as much support to Freddie Mac as you can. Uh, But I think you need to put a lot more into the argument of we should not be on the list at all and here's why. If you get that letter that says you're going on the list in 21 days. Now, if you do all of that and you still go on the list and now you think, well, gosh, I need to come off. You need to wait two years before you can come off the list. And then, so what I would suggest is within that two-year period, you do the things, you do things geared towards why you got on the list to show why you should come off the list. For example, I think a big one, take some continuing education within your industry, but continuing education that is specifically geared towards the things that got you on the list. So if one of the things that got you on the list was a lack of control within the office that allowed bad loans to be written, take leadership courses, take underwriting courses, take things that show Freddie Mac, I'm learning how to get more control of my office. If they say falsifying documents, take ethics classes, take document review classes, Take whatever types of continuing education within your industry that speak to the things that got you on the list and show Freddie Mac, I am more educated, so I will avoid this kind of stuff in the future. Therefore, you should take me off the list. The problem is you can't do that when you get the letter that says 21 days from now, you're going to be on the list. There just simply isn't enough time to take any education related to why they want to put you on the list. So again, I think that's why you go back and you argue, I should not be on the list. Now, if you find yourself on the list, uh, certainly reach out to my office, sean at yesnerlaw.com. I'll put it in the in the show notes as well. And let's talk about uh, you know, why are you on the list? How long have you been on the list? And can we get you off the list? Um, again, in all honesty, uh, all transparency, 
We have had clients that we've tried to get off the list. Some good letters that I thought I wrote. Some great evidence that I thought we uh, attached to our packages. And unfortunately, uh, these particular clients stayed on the list. However, if I had to look at all of the Freddie Mac cases I've handled, I think a majority, a good majority of all the people that I've helped have come off the list. I think it's a minority uh, that have not, and I think some of that minority is aided by the handful of people that I tried to help that got that 21-day letter that said, hey, in 21 days, you're going on the list. Still, if you get one of those letters and you think you may be going on the list, reach out to my office just because I've been, I like to be a, an optimist, and just because I've been unsuccessful with the first uh, three or four or five so far, it doesn't mean I won't be successful with episode six or, or with uh, submission six or seven or eight. But again, Let's have a conversation about it. The consultation's free. We can talk about it. We can figure it out. And then you can make whatever decision you think uh, is best for you, whether it's to have us help you try to stay off the list or wait uh, the two-year initial time period and then let's try to get you off the list. And, and even to contact me to consult, to say, hey, I just went on the list. I can apply to come off the list in two years. What do you think I should do in these next two years? Let's have a consult and let's see what kinds of things we can come up with to help you come off the list uh, when you're first available to do so. So that'll do it for this week's episode. Um, the Freddie Mac list is something that uh, I think is very, very interesting. It's something that I've stumbled upon. It's something that a lot of people don't know about. One of the things that I am most proud of is that if you search Freddie Mac exclusionary list, uh, just sort of naturally, I'm at the top of the Google rankings. I'm on page one uh, all over Google and Bing and all the different search engines because uh, I've put out so much content. In fact, interesting story. I had someone call me um, a couple of months ago and say, hey, I was at this uh, loan officer uh, loan origination course, and the instructor mentioned that if you find yourself on the Freddie Mac list to call your office, to call Yesner Law. And I, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm blown away by that. Who was the uh, the uh, mortgage person giving that class? And he gave me the person's name. and I have no idea who that person or who that company is. So, Thank you if you're listening to this episode. Uh, thank you for suggesting me as a resource to help people come off or stay off the Freddie Mac exclusionary list. I really, really appreciate it. And it tells me that all this content I'm putting out and all this good work that I'm doing is actually working. So thank you for that. So, you know, again, staying off the Freddie Mac list, coming off the Freddie Mac list is one of those things that will help you have more money at the end of the month rather than more month at the end of the month. A shorter episode this week, but that'll wrap us up for this week's episode. And we look forward to talking to you in next week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. If you have questions that you think would make a great topic for a future episode, please email Sean or connect with us on social media. Sean Yesner and Yesner Law PL are Florida licensed attorneys. The information contained in this week's episode is not a substitute for legal advice. Your situation may differ, especially if you are located somewhere other than the state of Florida. If you have questions, please contact our office or contact a local attorney. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Crushing Debt.